Andy here and welcome back to the channel where today I'm off to Ockham Bites. Now you may remember if you're a follower of the channel that I asked you guys at home if I should bring the Roadster or the 3.2 to Ockham Bites this weekend. I put a poll up on the channel. It was a close run thing with over 50 votes and the scores are right here but the winner was, of course, the Roadster. It's a glorious day, so thank my lucky stars it did win. I'm gonna put the roof down and we can head off to Ockham Bites. So off we go to Ockham Bites, which is situated just off the A3 M25 junction interchange for the third instalment. This proved really popular last year, to the point we filled the car park, which left a few locals frustrated while the cafe owner was more than pleased. However, to keep things friendly, we released details of this meet very late to limit numbers. Massive apologies if you were unable to make it, but we hope to find a bigger venue to get you all in soon. It's not just about the great cars on display, it is as much about the owners and their many different stories of TT ownership. Over the last two years of attending meets and making these videos, I have made some really good friends along the way. Many of you are featured, I am sure, somewhere in this montage. So let's take a closer look at some of these TT stories. Okay, this is George's track car. George, tell me all about this wonderful engine. I'll do what my best is. So this is a 180 and it's got a K0406 4 turbo, which is what you'll find on the TTS S3 from the TFSI family. Um, we have been to Badger recently and had the sort of finished product done. It's running a bigger uh, manifold. It's got forged pistons and rods. We've got a custom catch can. We're running a hybrid turbo on that core. And basically we've just gone to Ignatron, Meth and uh, NA Cam, so just wrong in the rev range. It's about 360 horsepower and it's where the turbo's capped at. So if we were to go Garrett, we'll get a bit more out of it, but for what I use it for, which is weekend toy when it's decent weather and track fun, it's just about there, probably because I'll stick it into a wall otherwise. Okay, so can you show me the back end of that and the, uh, the cage and the Meth? Yeah, of course. So nice and simple in the back. Uh, battery relocated, methanol tank on the side, and a uh, meth pump system there. Spare wheel, because you never know, but it will come out on track. So as it's a track car, have you got any fire suppression, anything like that in it? Yes, uh, in front of the passenger seat, I have an extinguisher for two kilograms, which I'd like to think will cover me for anything. So we've got a bit of carbon, we've got the meth controller, which I've done, may a bit conviction for the passenger, but they can move their legs in and a bit more carbon inside. I've done dials off the Audi 80 Quattro into the dash, which also helps your normal boost gauge. And I made my door cards with a slightly smaller flattened steering wheel, which helps with a bit of cornering. Thanks for showing us around, George. Thanks very much. This is an Audi Mark 1 TT ABT. Um, they only ever made 10 of them. And we know that there's, currently at the moment, there's only five left. There's this one, which is finished in Renault liquid yellow. They all came out of the factory with uh, Emily yellow paint, but this one has been resprayed in Renault liquid yellow. A friend of mine has got the green one, which is in a Lamborghini green, and we actually had another one, uh, which we acquired from someone in Scotland. So we had three ABTs at one point, and uh, we've just sold the yellow one. So there's this, the green, just sold the yellow one, and we know that there's one being rebuilt in the east of England, and there's one in Scotland, which is, which is just, Sawn. The, the reason why ABT built them is because they, they won the Touring Car Championship and they wanted to build a road going car which was the same as the, the car that won the, the, the Touring Car Championship. So basically they fettled around with the engine, put a bigger turbo on it. I mean there were subtle changes, there's nothing, it's not boosted to 1100 brake horsepower or anything. The, the brake horsepower from ABT was 310 
so it was quite manageable. Um, and they put carbon fibre all over the car, a special ABT grille, and at the back four pipes and an ABT carbon fibre scuttle tray. The differences on the inside were that the dials are in yellow, it's got some ABT styling, but credit to the guy that had the car before me because everything has been done, the, the seats have been retrimmed, the carpet's been retrimmed, absolutely no expense has been spared on the car. When they were first launched they sold for 50,000 and um, it was quite a lot of money in those days for, for a car which by today's modern standards doesn't have a lot of kit in it. But um, I think with the ABT being very rare now um, that it's become a little bit iconic in its own sense that there's only a few left. So um, for me personally I work abroad quite a lot so I don't get to drive it very much hence the reason why the car has done 40,000 miles. Um, and uh, I would I would sell it, but it would have to be for the right for the right money. But um, but it would be a very reluctant sale. It sits in a garage under a cover, and it's looked after by um, a team of mechanics who who basically just take the car once a month and do whatever is necessary to it. At, at no um, there is no cost limit to what I'll spend to keep it in its current form. So. Um, Fabulous. So yeah. thank you very much for showing us around your car. No worries. Chris? Chris Johnson and Yo. Chris Johnson. <laughs> That's yeah. what it's about. <laughs> Good yeah. to see you, mate. <laughs> hey. Jeff Cannon as well. Uh, so I've got a question for all four of you. Do any of you, any of you cut hair for a living? Does it look like it? <laughs> <laughs> I do cut hair, but not for a living. <laughs> well, I think that well and truly busts the myth that TTs are hairdressers' cars. And it should be added that there is nothing wrong with being a hairdresser. I'm sure you will agree that there is a really good mix of cars on display here at Ockham this time around, with Mark 1, Mark 2 and Mark 3s all making an appearance. It's great to see all three versions side by side like this, as the heritage running through them all is evidenced while taking on their own flavour of modern styling. So Dom, uh, what a great year again. Yeah. Yeah, I mean how many events have we had this year? Three or four? Three or four? Yeah, yeah, and all very popular. I mean even this one, what, ten days notice? Yeah. Nine days notice, whatever it was. And how many cars do you reckon we've got today? We've got there's more than forty. Definitely more than forty. Yeah. We've probably had ten leave already. So but I'd say it's probably fifty odd. Yeah, I mean it's been a I think it's been a better year this year than last year. What yeah. we're doing is just putting out there a date, a place where we're going to be, and people just turn up and everyone is just chatting TTs. Yeah, it, it's wicked. I mean, everyone here literally, they either know about the car or know about each other's cars, and I like that. Even if there's new, I mean, the one guy, you turn around there, that one with the Porsche wheels, um, never met the guy, but come up, knew about the channel, knew about, he's, oh, Andy's done it, you and Andy did this, la la la, and it just, I like it. And yeah. he's talking me through all, you said about this, and I like all of that. I do. Um, I think it's they have a better awareness of the Mark One and all the faults and stuff, so that when they buy one, they buy one going into it knowing the kind of problems they might have and allowing for a better ownership. Because if you buy a car straight away, you get a problem. Oh, that's a jinx car. No, you just went in straight away and went, oh, I like it. Here's the money. Yeah. And then you maybe paid over the odds. You maybe bought a lemon, or you just went in blind. But now they're buying them. They watch your channel, they watch my channel, they see some of the things that we have problems with regularly. <laughs> a lot of problems. A lot of problems. And then they buy, oh, it's only got this, this and this, but I paid this for it. And you're like, yeah, cool. And now the price this year went from this to we're back here somewhere. Yeah, it's dropped real down and even the parts cheap. 
really cheap at the yeah. moment so if you want to get one i think cars are very accessible at the moment and the number of cars that are currently available for sale is crazy there seems to be anything you want you can get a roadster you can get a v6 you can get a coupe whatever you want 180s 225s they're all out there yeah, and there are some nothing's out of reach you know, at the moment and there are some absolute gems out there as well so if you uh, shop around don't buy the first thing you come across but see what you can pick up because you can really find some great bargains out there yeah, yeah. hopefully we'll see you in them next year fabulous yeah <laughs> make sure you stay tuned it's always great to catch up with my two favorite fellow tts breakdown legends the breakdown, breakdown legends, legends. So let's have a look at Kyle's car a bit up more closely. Let's have a look at this engine then. Kyle, talk us through it. Um, so this is a 1.8 turbo. It's a Badger 5 built car. Um, I sent it to them about 14 months ago. Uh, it's had rods, bearings, springs. It's had the whole Badger 5 works. It's running a Garrett G25 550 turbo, big boost. Uh, pushing about 400, I think it's 415 horsepower. I've wow. got the dyno log inside somewhere. Um, but yeah, it's it's a point and shoot car. It was a bad to drive in and drive out build, but I love it. It's great. It's got yeah everything it needs really. Never so. fails to put a smile on your face. No, it is. It surprises at the the moments you're not expecting it. Come in. Yeah, it's had some serious work under here. Basically. All the parts were supplied by them. I originally wanted to go stage one and stage two of the car, and I just thought to myself, best way, just get it built, get it done right. So I instantly called them, set something up with them. Took, they took the car for three months, did all the work. I went and picked it up and drove out. So it was a driving and out system with them and it was the best way to do it. For what I wanted, it was just the easiest. Um, I did, before it went to them, I did the brakes. So it's got four pop Rembo brakes on it and it's got KW suspension all the way around. Um, I got it back from them, realized, I think it needs a Haldix controller. So I went and put one of those in, which oh, made the world of difference on this car. Really live into the backup. That's great. Thanks for showing us around. No worries. As soon as I went like that, I just called my eye. A couple of familiar faces here from uh, fellow YouTubers. Darren, Rappy, Carl Chris, how you doing boys? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah, good. Man. Good day. Yeah, yeah, yeah thanks yeah. very much yeah. for arranging it actually. It's, um, it's really well good. done, Charger. It's been a good uh, turn, hasn't it, really? Yeah. I reckon we've got about 50, 60 cars here as well. There's still more turning up. Yeah, I think your friends just turned up with this. This is the 1,000 horsepower monster, you see. 1,100. 1,100 horsepower. horsepower. Wow, so that is a monster car. I think he got yeah. uh, 0 to 60 in 3.9. Oh, is it? 3.09. Wow. I'll definitely go and take a close look at that. All right. Enjoy your day, boys. <laughs> I'm here with Baz, and Baz has got this fabulous 3.2. And as you can see, Baz is, is in a wheelchair, but he's not letting that stop him drive these great cars. Yeah, paralysed from the chest down, so I've, I've got no leg movement at all. That's all, all hands. Okay. So he has had the car modified with these great controls. And we'll let Daz tell us a little bit more about what the controls do. Yeah, it's, um, the thing that attracted me about the car was the flappy paddles. I've had, I've got, I've had a Subaru uh, WRX with a slush box, and trying to control the gearbox is a pain in the butt. Um, and this is more precise as you know is I got the real gears um, and that's what attracted me and, and the look of the car like, I've always liked the look of the car but when I figured they had the DSG that was it it had to be that car really and it works perfectly it's, it's just yeah as you know tap tap yeah through the gears um, sport mode is really cool as well um, if you want to be a bit lazy um, but yeah manual is awesome it's, it's pretty nice to be able to control the gears again You've got control for actually steering, and then yep. these controls are there for the uh, accelerator, I guess, yep. and the pull, brakes. Pull for uh, accelerating yeah. and push for brakes. So okay. You've got your you brake in your hand, you can brake really quickly. Um, and obviously one-handed, you need to steer with a ball. Okay. I've got the, con the uh, protector over the pedal, so my feet don't go behind the brake pedal accidentally. Right, okay. And that comes out, you can clip that so someone with feet can still drive it. Right, okay. And then that's about it for the conversion, really. And the, really. the hand, that, that's to help you get in and yeah, out, Yeah, get it? in and out, yeah, it's a really low car. You can see I've got the harnesses in there if I do a sports day or... Oh, okay, so you take it on the track as well, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I've been on the track day. Fair. I've been uh, up to Snetterton and this, I've done brands. That's why I got the cooler, the gearbox cooler. Okay. I'm told to be careful of the gearbox. Right. 
So um, it's great to see though, Baz, that you're not letting this stop you. Yeah, and it doesn't hang about. <laughs> no, well, we know the 3.2 is a great car to drive, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. do you love it? I love it the bits, mate. Love yeah. it the bits. Yeah. That's great. It's, well, thank, uh, you, uh, thank you very much for showing us around your car today. That's cool, man. And it's, uh, it's great to see that no matter what you uh, are doing in life, nothing will stop you from driving a 3.2. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Cool, man. A big thanks should also go to Andrea Mayer, who was taking photos of the cards on the day. Thanks once again for sharing these with the channel, Andrea. Well, another great day at Ockham Bikes with over 50 cars here today. If you like what you've seen today, then please do give this video a thumbs up and also think about yeah. subscribing to my channel if you've not already done so, where you'll find a whole host of information on the Audi TT. As always, thanks for watching. See you soon. Take care.